Another really important skill that we explore in the class, and for all social studies or history for that matter, is to understand and to deconstruct propaganda. And the Nazis were absolute masters when it came to the use of propaganda. So for the notes today, we're going to deconstruct and learn how to deconstruct the various propaganda images the Nazis created during the Third Wehrmacht. So let's get started. To begin, what is propaganda? Propaganda is actually a collection of many things. It's biased information, it simplifies complex ideas or issues, it plays on emotions, it's created to shape public opinion or behavior, it can be either true or partially true or just completely incorrect. It goes towards human action of human goals, it's images, words, and music, it advertises a cause or organization. Propaganda could be any of these topics mixed in. Now, some of the most common techniques for, co for propaganda is bandwagon, testimonial, plain folks, transfer, fear stacking, logical fallacies, creating generalities, and also name calling. So for propaganda, the bandwagon is an appeal to the subject to follow the crowd, tries to convince the subject that one side is winning the other, and the winning is inevitable, and it appeals to the person's desire to be on the winning side. Whereas a testimonial are quotations or endorsements by which attempt to connect a well-known or respectable person with the product or idea with intent to be sell the idea or the product to that person. A plain folks is an attempt to convince the public that his or her own views reflect the common person. And this can be an appearance of the common working person. Whereas transfer is an attempt to make the subject view a certain item in the same way as they view another. Use to transfer negative feelings. But in politics, this technique can be and often is used to transfer blame or bad feelings from one politician to another or one from one group of people to another group of people. Fear card stacking only represents and shares information that is positive for one group while information is presented as true is important to know as everything else that might be negative is omitted. But logical fallacies is an argument that sounds as if it makes sense, but the premise is given for the condition to not support it. Generalities is used words that have different positive meanings for subjects or individuals. Name calling is derogatory. The use of derogatory language or words that carry a negative connotation. And name calling attempts to arouse prejudice among the public by labeling the targets something that the public is there to dislike. If those are some of the tactics, what are the traits of propaganda? One is images and the use of large amounts of people to create an image. One thing the Nazis did quite a bit was to make it look like Germany itself was like a beating heart. The Wirtschaft, or national community, was a cornerstone of Nazi ideology. It was an organic and racial unit of all Aryan Germans, the master race. Political strife and decision had no place in the National Socialist Party, where contributing to general welfare of the nation was not individual. Nazi propaganda played a crucial role in selling the myth to Germans who longed for unity, national pride, and greatness. And this is partly for what happened at the end of the First World War or even the causes of the First World War with the whole nationalistic, imperialistic, uh, militaristic feelings that existed. To make a leader, Nazi propaganda idealized Hitler as a gift of statesman who brought stability, jobs, and German greatness. Nazi regime, Germans were expected to pay allegiance to the Fuhrer in a quasi-religious form, giving the Nazi famous salute or uttering the words, Heil Hitler. Faith in Hitler strengthened the bonds of national unity, while non-compliance signaled dissension in the society were open to a regime for imprisonment. 
To define an enemy, one critical factor in creating a cohesive group is to define who is excluded from the group. National propagandists of the Nazis contribute to the regime's policies by publicly identifying groups for the exclusion, inciting hatred or cultivating indifference to, or, to, or prejudice towards that particular group. Our propaganda helped to define those who would be excluded from the new society, such as Jews, gypsies, homosexual, political dissidents, or, German, or Germans who were viewed as inferior. To deceive the public, propaganda served as an important tool to win over the majority of the German public who had not supported Hitler. And a new state of propaganda uh, was led by Josef Goebbels, who was there to serve and to manipulate the various thoughts and ideas of the German ideology, the master race. And propagandists preach an appealing message of national unity so they can create this utopia future. But you also, and they needed to rally the nation. The Nazi party drastically increased its propaganda support and public support by advertising itself as a protest movement against the corruption of the Weimar system, the Weimar being the uh, republic, the democracy that was in Germany after um, the First World War. Other way to rally the nation was throughout World War II, Nazi propagandists disguised military aggression at territorial conquest for the sake of the Aryan civilization, that being uh, Liebestrom. Um, Nazi propaganda frequently stressed the power of the mass movement to propel the country forward, and this poster is a typical way of doing that, people together. You also needed to indoctrinate the youth, the Hitler youth in particular, was that. And from the 1920s onwards, the Nazi party targeted German youth as a special audience for its messages. And this we down through dynamic, resilient, forward looking, or hopeful ways of sending messages to the youth. Actually, the Battle of Berlin was a significant portion of the defenders were Hitler youth. And millions of German young people were won over to Nazism in the classroom and through some extracurricular activities. In writing for the news, the De Schermer was a notorious anti-Semitic newspaper in Germany. The newspaper was headed by Julius Schrechter, uh, which published uh, lucrative tales of Jewish ritual murder and sex crimes and financial malfinance. The Nazis understood the power of attraction of emerging technology such as film, loudspeakers, radio, and television there. Even actually the use of Hitler using the airplane to fly around Germany for elections was a very powerful, potent strategy that was that was used there. And overall the Nazi plan was seen on film and they always would use film to show the message to the people while using this new technology um, to win the over even the most skeptical of individuals.